seven video series called Watch, Think, Discuss. This week we've chosen a topic which affects every single person in the whole world. Yes, we are talking about anxiety. All of us are anxious about something in our lives. Yeah, mm. it may be schoolwork, it could be exams. It may be relationships, meeting new people. For some people it may simply be getting out of bed in the morning. We've got a video first of all to try and unpack some of the reasons we feel anxious. Yeah, let's have a look at some of the biological reasons of anxiety. We'll be back. You know what anxiety feels like. We all do. Everyone experiences anxiety in some way or another. It's something that connects all of us together. Why we feel anxiety and what it really is, that may surprise you. Without anxiety, we'd all be in serious trouble. As soon as your brain senses you're in danger, a little piece of it, called the amygdala, kicks in. It gets your body ready to react. That could mean fight, run away, or shut down. It's called the fight, flight, or freeze response. This reaction goes back millions of years to our distant animal ancestors. Animals whose amygdalae were more sensitive to danger were more likely to stay alive and off the menu. Over millions of generations, this developed into the system we all know as anxiety. So you see, anxiety itself is not all bad. But when there's no immediate life or death threat and your amygdala keeps telling your body that you're in danger, that's when anxiety becomes a problem. Your amygdala doesn't know the difference between getting eaten and public speaking or failing a test. Human society has only existed for a relatively short time. It's messy and complicated and confusing, and our amygdala just haven't had time to catch up. So sometimes, when we're in uncomfortable situations, our brains misread the risk and overreact. Our hearts beat faster and we breathe heavily, pulling more oxygen into our bodies. The muscles in our arms and legs tense up and fill with blood. Our skin perspires to cool us down. This would all be great if we needed to fight or run, but instead, we just feel tense and sweaty. Sometimes our minds go blank and we feel like we can't move or talk. That would be great if we needed to hide. Instead, we just feel stuck. When things trigger our anxiety, sometimes we try to avoid them, like our ancestors avoiding a predator. But that can cause problems when those triggers are important parts of life, like going to school or meeting new people, things that won't just give up and go away. So how does knowing all this help? Well, it starts with remembering what's really going on. There's nothing physically wrong with you. It's just your amygdala trying to tell you it thinks you're in danger, even if it gets confused about how much danger you're really in. Understanding why we feel anxiety is an important step in learning to manage it. very interesting how our brain makes us anxious on purpose I know it's crazy to think that our brains make, made us anxious to protect ourselves I know the problem comes when all of that nervous energy is, is, is there and we don't know what to do with it and we start to overthink it can produce very strange physical reactions as well yeah and some of the symptoms that you may feel or we might feel is that a bit sweating quite often, yeah. uh, our heart starts to beat really, really fast, mm -hmm. some knots in our stomach, uh, and in the worst case scenario, can lead us to depression. It yeah. can. It can stop us meeting our friends. Mm -hmm. It can stop us eating well. Mm -hmm. I can remember a time when I had a wisdom tooth out and it was so bad that the dentist literally had to put his knee on my chest, I know. So every time now, anybody even says the word wisdom tooth, I can feel myself getting anxious and I can avoid going to the dentist if I'm not careful. Yeah, I think for me it's, it's something just like this, recording a video uh, uh, to you guys uh, can make me feel really anxious and how you may be, be judging me because of my accent or because English is not my first language so it can put me off sometimes but I need to overcome that don't I? Yeah, you're doing very well that. Better <laughs> than I can do in Portuguese. <laughs> so, what we need to try and think of are ways and strategies of helping us when we do feel anxious because we all will feel anxious. Have a look at this another video which is a short clip giving us five ways that can help us.
If you suffer from social anxiety, you will fear certain situations. This can vary from person to person. Some fear speaking in front of groups of people. Some fear meeting new people, while others fear going to parties or other types of social events. In whichever situation your fear arises, you'll probably experience sweating, blushing, feeling your heart race, or other symptoms of anxiety. One of the primary symptoms you'll feel is thinking others will judge you or find you lacking in some way. Not to worry though, no matter what your symptoms are or where they hit you, there are things you can do on your own to deal with your social anxiety. Number one, deep muscle relaxation. Learning to physically relax is one of the best ways to combat anxiety. It is impossible to feel both relaxed and anxious. For deep muscle relaxation, you will tense, then relax the major muscle groups of your body, beginning with your feet and working your way towards your head and face. Number two, slow breathing. Controlling your breathing when you're anxious is another good way to deal with your emotions. When you're anxious, your breathing becomes faster and more shallow, and as a result, you'll feel lightheaded and dizzy, bringing on more anxiety. Learning to breathe slower and more regularly through your nose will help you calm down. This technique won't get rid of your anxiety, but it will help you better handle the situation you're experiencing. Number three, visualization. The key to visualization is to remember a place where you felt safe and comfortable. Once you remember this place, get a picture of it in your mind so clearly that you can feel, see, smell, and even taste that place. This takes practice and patience. Number four, control your thoughts. Faulty thinking is a hallmark of social anxiety. Believing that others are judging you and finding you faulty in some way is a majorly detrimental way of thinking that occurs. So it is important to evaluate whether those thoughts are true. Ask yourself for proof. People with social anxiety tend to overestimate how badly others think of them. Keep in mind, your thoughts are only guesses about what others will think or what you will do. How you think is a habit, and habits can be changed. Number five, face your anxiety. Most people with social anxiety want to hide, avoid, or run away from whatever they're scared of. But by facing your anxiety instead, you'll find that it is usually something you can tolerate after a few exposures. However, you may want to try this on a situation that brings a relatively low level of anxiety first. When using this method, focus on what's going on around you instead of what's going through your mind. That should help you distract yourself from those anxious thoughts. Hopefully guys, you find helpful one of those five tips that we gave to you in your anxiety. Yeah, they're useful. I also had somebody say to me something very interesting the other day. They said, anxious people are people who care. Ooh. It's true, isn't it? Because if you didn't care, you wouldn't be anxious about it. So maybe we need to start using our anxiety in a more positive way and using it to help us to do the best we possibly can in situations. Yes, as you guys know, uh, we are a Christian organization uh, and what really helped us is to connect to God. Uh, there is a verse in the Bible that says, do not be anxious about everything in life, but in every time, connect to me, talk to me, and I will help you. Yeah, it's true. Mm. And I love the bit where Jesus' last words on earth was to his disciples, and he said, my peace I leave with you. So I too, when I'm anxious, I say, come on God, help me out. So we are leaving with you guys some few questions for you to have a discussion. So thank you very much for joining us today, and see you next time. Bye.